okay? Jay-Z is one of one. He's a diamond forged under pressure. His journey is extraordinary. From bed Marcy Projects to the world stage. But it only looks unlikely from the outside. Jay-Z set his intentions early. I saw it all before it came to fruition. Sort of a premonition, he once rhymed. And then over the decades, he worked to make those intentions happen. All this pain from the outside inspired all this growth within. He said that on God did. The Book of Hope traces Jay-Z's journey. This tribute spans the library. As you explore, you'll encounter visuals, audio stories, and physical artifacts for more than 25 years of his life. A replica of Baseline Studios, the legendary space where he recorded some of his most influential work. The guitar he played at Glastonbury Festival, and videos of young Jay-Z speaking his future into existence. Jay-Z represents so much to so many, a vanguard, a visionary, a genius, a blueprint. His list of firsts is long in music, culture, and business. And you can learn more about them here. But those things aren't what makes him an icon. In any room he walks into, he is himself, always. As you'll see, hear, and experience in this exhibit, Jay-Z has demonstrated with his whole being that you can set your intentions and create your own story, even when the world tells you otherwise. The Book of Hove is a tribute to Jay-Z, executive produced by Rock Nation and hosted at the Brooklyn Public Library. Welcome, enjoy, and be inspired. I run the show, oh, the shit, you went the prize it though, and I like it, look, it's out of my hands, and you get money round here, I'm getting ghosts, I'm hearing noises, I think it's the boys, but I've been banking the Deutsch, we got star fr-
That's whoever did that is smart to kill that. I need this for me. This shit is gone.
I said, how much money did you make? And she made $20 a week. And she said, uh, no, but it was fine. You could do a lot with $20 in those days. And with that sort of attitude, that's, that's where I grew up. I grew up believing I could do anything, that I could accomplish anything because of those strong women in my house. I feel like I've been representing a, but like there's a whole bunch of people out there, you know, who don't have this for them, who lead, you know, to eloquent things, but they don't know how to put it in rhymes for them. Right. All I'm doing is taking their words and their conversation, the conversation that I'm having every day, and just putting it in the rhyme for them. And just, I'm that voice, I'm that, that, that cry from the ghetto. And I know what I didn't want, I know what I wanted, but for control of my music. We decided, you know, I mean, why, why do all this work, put all this work in it, and just give all this money to these major companies when we can do it ourselves? Well, we need is distribution, and we're working on that now. We're going to find a way around that distribution. If the record company was uh, become successful, I wouldn't believe we could do anything at that point. It was like, well, they wouldn't give us a record deal. We started a record label. They won't give us a clothing deal. Let's start a clothing line. Just thought I had a responsibility to the culture to show it in a different light. That we can't just sing the executive level because who's better to coach the players than the people who play the game? I like to advance every year, to advance myself. I have more of a fear going back than losing money. I'm sure we won't. Then we started Rock Nation and everyone looked and said, Universal or Def Jam, like we built the brand. We are culture. Nothing moves without us. There's a knowing in being an artist. There's a knowing. You can't guess. You can't think. There's a knowing. And then a lot of people will try to put their fears on you. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. Are you crazy? How are you going to do that? How? My uncle said I've never sold a million records. I sold a million records like a million times. You know, you get to a point in your life and you like really focus on what's important. That's what really just brings me genuine happiness. Our kids, they don't have those, they don't have a legacy, so, you know, they don't have those businesses that they can just, you know, step into. We want to put together something real special that our kids and our kids' kids know I have a place to have something for me at Rockefeller, you know? So my goal is that that the next generation can have a better start than I have. We won't have to start so far, you know, where I come from. We have to take care of our family first. That's all I want to do for y'all. I want them to be better than me. I want them to go further. I want to look back and be like, man, they took that guitar and like, what they did with it. If you want to know about Jay Z's real life, just listen to his music. Woven through his verses, you'll find artifacts of his experiences. All his lyrics are true. Everything around Jay Z is source material. He'll be talking to friends, then jump in the recording booth and drop lines from the conversation into a rhyme. Being able to do that requires a few rare skills. He's listening, talking, and writing in his head at the same time. Plus, the rhymes he constructs hold multiple meanings. One level for friends, another for fans. Different messages for different listeners. A tradition dating back to spirituals with coded guides to freedom. Jay-Z also looks to the collective past for inspiration. Like his words on Most Kings, you Malcolm X'd out, get distracted by screams, everybody get your hand off my jeans. Jay-Z is pointing people to the assassination of Malcolm X and the words shouted before shots were fired. 
inviting listeners to learn more about the complicated story of that pivotal moment. His lyrics don't just refer to history. They rescue moments that risk being forgotten. You don't have to catch the reference to appreciate the line, but Jay-Z's storytelling rewards the curious. He leaves breadcrumbs for those who want to dig deeper. On a technical level, there's no one like him. Rappers usually have a signature flow, a unique way that they combine words, voice, and cadence. They select beats that match their flow. Jay-Z is different. He hunts for beats that inspire him and tailors his flow to each track, adjusting his pitch, breath, and speed. He bends his words and syllables around the music, like a sports car who's got multiple gears and can shift quickly. Jay-Z has always drawn on elevated poetic techniques. Inner syllable rhymes, metaphor, double and triple entendres, alliteration like the string of bees in Empire State of Mind. Now I live on Billboard, and I brought my boys with me. His poetics are a purposeful manipulation of the English language, and he does it all without writing anything down. That is incredibly special. Most artists write their rhymes on paper. Jay-Z composes exclusively in his head, putting him in the oral poet tradition that dates back thousands of years. In 2017, he became the first rapper inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. This is a win for us, he wrote at the time. I remember when rap was said to be a fad. We are now alongside some of the greatest writers in history. After Jay-Z broke that barrier, a rapper has been inducted in every ceremony since. My advice is just don't be too nice to niggas. Just set the price on niggas and live your life, my niggas. I will not lose.